Good evening, Planet Earth, and welcome to the Good News Program. A special guest this evening. This is part two, Dorothy Sambakin. Dorothy, thank you so much for coming over and sharing your life story with us. We appreciate that so much. You know, the people out there that are watching it and saying, hey, if you can do it for Dorothy, you'll do it for me too. Amen. That's it. Because he's no respect of people. You know, so that's why we do this. Just a brief capsule. You came, mm. I want to get us into part two. You came from mm. Uganda. Um, you and your husband mm. left some children at home mm. to make a way over here. Yes. And God said, you know, I'm going to honor that. Yes. And you saw his face. When you seek his face, he shows up. Mm. And he gives us your plans and your directions and, mm. and things like that, you know. Mm. Um, so now we're going to fast forward a little bit. Mm. You have uh, finished your nursing school. Mm. You, you, you asked the Lord to put it on hold. He had mm. given you a word. He wanted you to start a woman's ministry. Yes. And your husband said you're crazy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, he did not believe that. Uh, first of all, again, I want to appreciate you. Thank you once again for having me yeah. on your program. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so my husband did not really, really believe it. They would. They were like, "Are you okay? <laughs> uh, starting a ministry here in the United States? Yeah. How can somebody do that?" Yeah, but as I said, I was in uh, uh, praying, in mm. prayer and fasting for the work of God. And, and when the Lord told me that uh, I should start the women's ministry, I said, uh, after I finished school. Mm -hmm. So from then, I did not hear the voice again at all. I did not. And then after I finished school, God honors his word. When I finished school, after I graduated and I, did, I finished doing my boards yeah. and I got my first job, the voice came again. I was sleeping. Mm -hmm. And the voice said, start now. I heard that voice like you. Yeah. yeah, talking to me. Yeah. Start now. So first of all, I ignored the voice and I turned on the other side. Yeah. But after 30 to 45 minutes, the voice came again and it said, start now. Then I jumped out of my bed and I went downstairs. I found my husband there and I said, I'm going to start a women ministry. And he said, are you crazy? How can you start a women ministry without even telling anybody? I said, I'm starting it in one week. I love it. This is you. This is Dorothy. Yeah. This is your personality. <laughs> I know it. Yeah. yeah, it's good. So I'm like, he's like, you cannot. I said, I waited for two minutes and say, I said, okay, after two weeks. But in two weeks, Bill, we had started the ministry. We had our first breakfast in June 2008. He was right, though. Your, your husband was right. <laughs> you can't start it, <laughs> but Jesus can. I remember yes. a guy saying to me last week, Dorothy, mm -hmm. how do you do this? And I said, I don't know. Yeah. He said, what do you mean you don't know? I said, I don't know how I do this. Yeah. He said, well, this, this things are all over the place. I said, well, I guess. He said, you don't know how you do it. I said, yeah. let me tell you something, dude. Mm. If I knew how to do it, I would screw it up. I'd let him do it. And I'd just show him. Yes, yes. So that's... It, you know, it sounds oversimple, but the thing is, when you seek his face and you're in his presence, mm. you will hear his voice. It might be a vision, mm. it might be an impression, it might be a, a word a of scripture, mm. it might be a friend talking to you, yes. but it will, you'll hear it. Yeah, it and might even be a dream. You, oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, because yeah. mine came as a dream, the ministry. It was kind of a dream and a flash. I was kind of awake and asleep. Yeah. God talks in different Well, this ways. is the manufacturer's handbook yes. right here, mm -hmm. you know? Yes. Um, and from Genesis to Revelation, mm. God speaks to us in dreams. He does. All right? Yes. Um, 
Did we that. have a ministry at our, at our church with mm. dream interpretation, mm. and it is really interesting. Mm. You know, um, people are trained up uh, in this. It, it takes a while, and it takes, you really have to zero in on it, you know. Mm. Um, I tried it, and I, that's not my bag. Mm. So if I get a dream that I think is significant, you know, then I will write, write it, down. it down. But, you know, it, all, all dreams don't come from God. Yeah. They might come from the pizza that you had the, in two yeah. hours earlier. Food. Well, they could yeah. be from the enemy. Who knows, mm. you know? Mm. So um, you can get them interpreted. Mm. I mean, all the time in this, in this book, this is, this is God's book. This is one of his ways he communicates. Yes. There's dreams. It is. There's dreams, yeah. you know? Mm. And he's still the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Mm. Things don't change. You know, we think we're going to change things. Mm. Right? No, 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 I don't think so, you know. So, um, so you have the you have the first meeting. Yes. Okay, we had our first breakfast meeting, which was so good. And most uh, first of all, why we do even the meetings, uh, the meetings we do to encourage, to empower other women and their families. Yeah. So when you empower a woman, there is a saying that uh, uh, kind of uh, empower a woman, you are empowering a, a nation. That's uh, one of the women leaders said that. Mm -hmm. So we empower women so that they can reach to their uh, destiny where God wants them to be. Yeah. So that's what we do okay. during the conferences. We bring hope to the hopeless yep. and we bring healing to people who need it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of women find themselves in tough situations. Yes. You know, difficult situations and... Mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we were, we were talking earlier and we said, you know, in, I think it's a Two Kings 4 when mm. the widow comes to Elisha and she said, hey, mm. we sold everything, Elisha, mm. and my husband's dead. Mm. You know, what am I going to do? Mm. And I'm up to here in debt. Mm. They're coming to take my kids like they repossess a car. In those days, they repossess kids yes, to yes. be slaves. And, mm. and she said, you know, that's so he didn't just go, I don't know, you know. Yeah. He got a download and he said, uh, what do you got in the house? She said, he said, I'll get a little oil. Yeah. He said, okay, mm. get your kids, your inheritance to get involved here. Yes. Go out and get the jars and the, and the, the cups mm. and the, any kind of things, mm. 50 gallon, gallon drums or whatever mm. in your neighborhood and ask them if they could let you have them, mm. borrow them. He didn't say keep them, borrow them. You can borrow them. Mm. And then take, get your sons to pour the little bit oh. of oil you got. Mm. That's, a, that's significant. Everything means something. something. That oil is the Holy Spirit, okay? Yeah. So they pour it in, and pretty soon everything is filled up. Filled up, yes. And when you don't have anything more to pour it in, they said, Maui, you don't have anything left. Yes. We're all filled up. Mm. So, she's, so she tells Alicia, we, we, got it all. we don't have anything more. We mm. can't get it. We bugged all the neighbors. We got all their containers. Mm. And they're all full of oil. What do we do? He said, well, I'll tell you what. Mm. Now, this guy's smart. He said, you bring the container back and sell him the oil. And sell I the like oil. it. Huh? That's, that's been going on for years. Come on. We think we've been coming on. That's God. Yeah. <laughs> that's so our God. Yeah. He sells him the oil. She, mm. You know, pay your debts off and you get enough to live by. Yes, you know? yes. So there's hope. There so, is hope. You know, always. her husband was dead. But you can be dead and alive at the same time. Definitely. And I know that most guys are dead. Yes. You know, and mm. in this, the culture that we we live in, a lot of them mm. rely on their wife to be the spiritual mentors, and that's not the way God mm. intended to be. Mm -hmm. But he will raise women up. Yes. And he will say, okay, mm. you're going to wake up daddy. And yes. I, I told you a story earlier. Yes, I have a friend yeah, I in Lowell. Mm. I mean, this gal was unbelievable. I mean, she wore the hats like this at church, and mm. she'd go down the aisle and... You pay attention to the past. I knew mm, them, you know. Mm. But her husband, good guy, went to work, took care of the family. 35 years go by. She was in the prisons, people getting saved. She was fantastic. Mm. But he's, he's nothing. The wife that has My friend dead. Brian mm. marries her daughter, who mm. I knew because she was one of the kids in our prayer group at the high school, mm. um, and invites the, fa the father-in-law to a breakfast at an AME church, a men's giving a testimony, the guy could save the fire just like that. Boom. 35 years. God says, you know what? I don't have clocks and calendars. I have a purpose and a plan, and I'll work it out the way wow. he did. Always good. You know, I mean, it's, it's amazing. So now you've started. The, I've been to them, you know. Yes. They, they're, 
They're great. Boring, yeah. Oh, it's, mm. it's, I, I enjoy it. I love them. Yes. I'm looking forward to the next one, the next which is one. coming up very shortly, another month. Yes. Yeah, and so mm. when it's going to be in Newton. Yeah. yeah. It will be in April, April 11. Right, uh, so Saturday morning. Saturday morning, uh, this year, 2015. Uh, 161 North Street in Newton. Okay. Yeah, so it, it will yeah. be wonderful. It's yeah. going to be a wonderful thing. So yeah. I just want to encourage every woman, man, and all children. We start from age 12 because women of purpose, we start from age 12 to uh, all over. Yeah. You, you know, we talked and we mm. said, you know, we, the women that, you know, we say women of purpose. Mm. Well, the woman is your agenda. Yes. But when God sees you, he says, that's my daughter. My lady. That's my lady. Yes. And now there's a big difference between mm. a lady and a woman. Yes. A lady is elegant. Yes. A lady is graceful. Yes. She has uh, favor. Yes. And she knows how to work the situations. That's and so. we talked about, you know, we talked about, um, well, it's, come on, I'm having a senior moment. What's mm. her name? Um, Esther. Um, Esther. We talked yes. about Esther. Mm. You know, she was a lady. Yeah, she yeah. she became a lady, mm. and uh, I mean, I mean, she took the eyes of the king, which is the world. He goes, mm. "Whoa, this doll is pretty nice," you know. But she, there's always a Mordecai to encourage her. Encourage her uncle mm. encouraged her, and you know they defeated the enemy that way, and yeah. she saved the whole nation. Well, yeah. you know what? If Esther can save a whole nation, yes. there's plenty of women that if they get into who God says they are can save their families and bring them in to yeah. realms that they have never, ever could imagine. Yes. He says in Ephesians, whatever, more than you could imagine, dream, or think of, mm. you know, dream big because the sky's the limit with God, yes. you know? So that's why we always want to encourage uh, young women, ladies, and all our aunties, cousins uh, to come up and pray and seek God so that we can change our nation, so that we can change our families. Mm -hmm. It's about, it starts with a woman. It's yeah, right. it starts with a woman. You That's know, what I believe. I, yeah. I tell you what, mm. a man can build a house. Yes. The woman builds a family. They do build a family. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, they're there 24 7 with the kids all the time, you know? Yeah. So, um, but I, I remember going to a conference over in Waltham mm -hmm. and so many good things happened. And you said to me, Bill, mm. you, you, you must come. Because we have some people from law, people from everywhere. Yes. You know, I mean, all kinds oh, of people. You know, yeah. sizes, shapes, colors, genders, yes. we got them all, you know? Yes. So we got there and we went in the back at the mm. American Legion and yeah. it was a breakfast. Uh, you know, I wasn't eating. Mm. So I said, this is a true story. This is, you know, this was what I experienced at yes. this. This is crazy. Mm. So, and I, and I said, who's from, who's from uh, Lowell? And they, guy doing a breakfast is a Spanish guy in his 30s. He said, I'm from Lowell. Yes, I, I said, remember. You remember? Yeah, Keith. So, yeah. So, Pastor Keith. Yeah. So mm. I said, um, really? I said, you go to Lowell High? He said, yeah. And he's looking at me like this, Dorothy, you know? Yeah. He said, why do I know you? I said, maybe I was your gym teacher. He said, <laughs> oh, my good. Now, there's yeah. 4,000 kids at Lowell High, right? Yes. I said, what's your name? He said, Victor Perez. I said, Victor, I remember you. Yes. You were Golden Gloves champion. Yes. He said, yeah. I said, mm. and all the coaches wanted you to be track, basketball. Yeah. You stuck with the boxing. Mm. He said, right. I said, what's going down now? He said, well, he said, my wife, he said, is the coordinator for all the uh, Hispanic programs that are coming into the city. I said, wow, that's good. He mm. said, and we're the youth pastors at the Blossom Street Church. And I said, oh, wow. My yes. father took it over. They moved to a new location. And um, <clears throat> so there's a guy standing beside him. This is true, Dorothy. Yes. And my job at the high school was to have lunch with all the Hispanic kids. Most of them were Puerto Rican kids. Mm. We got along fabulous. I'd take them to retreats. It was great. I mean, it was like one big family. So there's a guy standing beside him. And he said, you know this guy? I said, I don't know him. He said, yeah, you do. I said, Victor, I don't know the guy. And the guy's just smiling yes, like this. You yes. know? And I said, uh, he said, oh, yeah, he's married to my sister. I said, that does not ring a bell, Victor, you know? Mm. I said, who is it? He said, Keith Nelson. Keith Nelson was one kid. I remember asking Julio, I said, this, th you knew he was headed for trouble. He, no. Yeah, he. Oh, yeah. And he said, I said, Julio, this kid's going to the can. He said, he'll be in there very quick. Yes. 
Yeah. And well, a drug deal went bad, yeah. and a Cambodian kid got shot dead. Yeah. And that's automatic second degree, 15 years in Massachusetts, right? Mm. And he's standing there, and I mean, I'll tell you, like, I'm stunned. I'm absolutely. And he's smiling. I said, Keith, you did 15. He said, no, I did 16, Bill. He said, but when I was there, he said, I, I met Jesus. Christ. And I'm preaching this Ooh, afternoon. <laughs> I know. He has a great testimony. And you let me oh introduce Victor and Keith. I said, my students. <laughs> no, I never knew that going in. Yeah. You know what? Never knew it going in. That was important. That was because my wife had gotten into a little bit of a car accident yes. with the car before, and the steam coming out my ears, and the Holy Ghost said, don't go that way. Hmm. You've got a blessing coming. Yes. And that was a blessing. Oh, my God. So, you know, every, so these things happen all the time no reason, at these yeah. meetings. It's, mm. uh, it's incredible, you know. Great testimonies happen in our conferences. We've, be, we've seen lives touched. Yeah. People touched. Oh, we, yeah. Women of Purpose, uh, we've done a lot. We've reached our community. Yeah. Yeah, we've gone to preaching. Because Women of Purpose, it's about also preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us, go unto the world and yep. preach. Yep. So it doesn't matter if you are a pastor, whether you are a housewife or anything. What matters is you go and preach to your family. You go and preach to your brother. Preach to your co-workers. That's what we have to do. Preach the gospel. Yeah. yeah. Now the theme for this next conference is what? is command your morning. We took, out, took it out from the book of Job 38, verse 12. Okay. Yeah. If we can read that Job. Sure. Uh, right. Job here. Oh, you want to read that there? Mm. All right, good. 38, 12. That's, mm. uh, command your Job, morning. Yeah, command your morning. Because uh, your day, how your day will be, uh, it starts how you start it with the day. Yeah. Yeah. Here, Job. Job says 38 verse 38 verse 12 verse 12 uh, God himself was talking uh, in the other first verses but here 12 says have you commanded the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to know its place that it might take hold of the ends of the earth and the wicked be shaken out of it. Right. So you got to shake the wickedness out of your day. You start it in the morning. Right. At three in the morning, right. you have to command, prophesy, decree, <laughs> declare, yeah. favor, anointing, wisdom. Oh, you have to command your morning people of God. Right. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I love the... Uh, theme for this year. So we want to encourage all women and men how to start their day because sometimes you go to work and you find trouble. It's trouble because you did not start your day right. Mm -hmm. It's about how you start your day. It's your perspective yes. for the day. Yes. Knowing who you are, knowing who daddy is, mm. knowing that you have you carry an aura of influence. Yes. It's, you know, so in your you know, we were talking earlier about this, and mm. uh, I, you know, I can remember way, way back. Mm. Um, I'm teaching school, and this guy would come through the full gospel meetings, and mm. he'd stay with us, and he would, he would talk about doing just what you said. Mm. <clears throat> well, I, my, my thing was like, I'd have to get up at five in the morning to do this. Mm. Nothing's open at five. You know, come on, five years I put it off. Dog. Mm. I put it off. Mm. So finally. Uh, my wife went to a conference and came back and said, you know, the, this guy Cho was there from Korea and his people get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and they, mm. and they you know, they, they come into the presence of God by themselves and boom. Mm. And it was like this, the Holy Spirit hit me alongside the head. Yes. And he said, you know what, when are you going to do this? So I said, okay. I'd get up, I'd go to bed early the night before, get my stuff out so I could get up at quarter five, five to six, I was in his presence. I'd read the word, mm. I'd listen to what it was saying, yeah. and I would seek his face. Because yes. he says, all his promises are in here. There. If you do it, you know, it's going to happen. Yes. So, you know, I won't tell you that I wasn't tired some days. I was. Mm. But some days I felt like Superman, right? Yes. Um, <clears throat> but what happened was, 
at the end of a year and a half, mm. we're all in the same little church. Mm. All my kids are saved. And you know what? I was no box of chocolates growing That's up. So and mm. apples don't far fall from trees. Yes. And they were the same, but they all got saved. You know? They all. You know, That's and good. So it works. And you set a perspective for mm. the day. Mm. And I'm doing it ever since. I, I am addicted to it. Yeah. I cannot not function without doing without that. Yeah. You know, so, you know, when people do this, mm. God says in Malachi, give me your best. If you give him your best when you're fresh, yes. guess what? You have, a, you have a completely different perspective yeah. on life. You're looking through with the mind of Christ, yes. through his eyes, how he starts to see things. Yeah. And it's not from a worldly perspective. Mm. You know, the world is falling apart, but that's mm. not how he sees things. He sees the opportunities. The opportunity. He sees people that, yes. that, you know, he wants to reach and touch and, yes. and give them this, what he's got. Yes. You, you, guys are, you guys are in the UK. Your yeah. sister's in London. Yeah, my sister uh, is in London. She is carrying a ministry called uh, Women of Action. Okay. So we connect and network with different even women over there yeah. because uh, it's very good to connect. And also we have a, a ministry in Uganda. Yeah, tell me and about that. I oh want to my that. God. With the Uganda ministry, I'm like so excited and so happy about it because we started uh, women, uh, women of Purpose in Uganda in 2010. That was after I, told, I talked to my daughter about the vision that I had. Yeah. I told her, Leticia, I have this vision that is on my heart. I want to start uh, ministry. I want to start bringing Christ back in school. And she said, Mommy, how can I do it? I cannot. Like anybody else can yeah, say, yeah, I, yeah. I cannot. Yeah. So she said, but I have a friend of mine. Maybe you can share the vision so that we can see how we can do it. Her name is Frolens. So I called Florence, and Florence was excited about what she was hearing. And she said, you know, Mommy, what we can do is to talk to one of the teachers so that they can allow us, grant us how we, uh, the permission to do it. I talked to this lady called Aida Katana. She's one of our coordinators now in Uganda. Yeah. She <laughs> was excited. Yeah. She's like, this is what I've been looking for. You see how God can connect yeah, yeah. things, lines and puzzles? <laughs> this is what she was looking for. And this is the dream that I was carrying. Boom! Together. So now we train people in uh, Deja Secondary School and those kids go to different uh, schools to preach the gospel. Isn't that wonderful? They can do this in Uganda. They do this in Uganda by the grace of God. By His grace. Yeah. yeah. They do that. And then we carry back Christ. No drugs. Because when we carry Christ, we tell them the bad effects of the drugs. We mm. tell them that it's not good to, to be prostitutes. We talk about each and everything. Your life. And the teachers and the principals love it. And they've embraced women of purpose in Uganda. And I like that about it yeah wow yeah so it had has touched lives see if yeah. it's god's plan which obviously it is mm. then he's in it yes and when he's in it, it that's the end of the that's lesson. yeah yeah that's, if god wow. is in something nothing can be difficult as i say yeah, yeah. Mm. wow god has that's, been so wonderful but the, our uh, motivation factor is go unto the world yeah. and preach yeah. the gospel. Tell him what I did for you. Yes. That's what he says. <laughs> Tell him what. That's what yeah. he said to the, the demoniac. Yes. You know, if it's in Luke 8, it's mm. also in uh, Mark 5. Mm. You know, this guy's, uh, this guy's a real, he's out there. He's, he's possessed. Mm. Mm. And they're, they're in the boat. You know the mm. story. And the apostles, they say, mm. well, why don't we take him with us? You know, after he gets cleaned up. I mean, this is a guy that's, Mm. scaring everybody, mm. eating the cats and dogs in the town, mm. and uh, he gently at the feet of Jesus. Mm. Now the apostles go, whoa, whoa, mm. this is unbelievable. They're still learning themselves. Yeah. Well, why don't we take them with us? Mm. And Jesus said, no, go back and tell them what I did for you. Yes. Because on that trip, the people didn't want Jesus to stay because Mm. The demons went into the pigs, and they were selling the pigs. Mm. It screwed up their economy, mm. really. Probably that's part of it. Yes. But the next time he came through, mm. it was standing room only, mm. because this guy went back and told them what happened to him. 
And that's what happens. It's like chain reaction. One, yeah. one beggar tells another one where to get bread. That's yes. all. That's it. Yeah, so I just want to encourage even other uh, listeners, people who are watching us right now, mm. to join us. Yeah. Join us and let us go and do the will of God. Yeah. The work of God is yeah. to preach, is to send that Jesus still is in business of working miracles and wonders. Oh, yeah. He's still doing it. Yeah. So I encourage each and everybody to yeah. come and join us. Yeah. We still have room. We need volunteers in yeah. Women of Purpose. Yeah. We need lots of things so that we can go and, you know, You know, uh, I, I also want to say this. Mm. Men are welcome. Because I remember the first one I went to, I yes. said, do I have to get a wig and dress, put a dress on? And you laughed. You said, come on. I feel all those guys are going to be here, yeah. you know. And we had a wonderful time, you yes. know. Mm. Um, so I want to encourage when mm. this comes up. And if anybody, you know, mm. says, when is the next one coming up that I could go to? Well, then just contact us. There's a, yeah. there's a contact on the screen here somehow yes. Yes. that they can get in touch with us. And we'll, we'll tell them. Yes. Um, but it's, it's a gr it's wonderful to see mm. people's lives change. Mm. You know, he, he says he's still doing it. And what he says, you know, heal the sick, drive out the demons, raise mm. the dead. Yes. You know, that's what he said to that's, do. Yeah. Now, what do you want to be? You want to be a nurse, doctor, or, you know, uh, drive a uh, car, or whatever mm. you want, drive a bus or something. But heal the sick, yes. Matthew 10, 7 and 8. Yes. Raise the dead. Mm. And we've seen the dead raised. We have um, seen it. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, so I, I encourage everyone. This is our goal. Yeah. Touching lives. Yeah. We need to go in different churches, in different um, um, schools. Yeah. I wish they can uh, allow us here in America huh. to, uh -huh. to talk about Christ. Because yeah. without uh, Christ, in, uh, you will see people murdering each mm -hmm. people. You will see people like... Uh, not uh, using drugs, yeah. drugs in uh, school. Oh, well, yeah. Because yeah. they don't have the Well, morals, the thing is, we try and do it with our mm. head. Mm. Um, but you know, I don't get discouraged because this thing is going to turn around. Yeah, yes. I mean, it, yes. in this book, it, it's, 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 this happened all the time. Yes. God says, I open and close doors. Yes. So I'm not, you know, He's going to open the door again. Yes. Um, I like that. Uh, yeah, He will. He will. Um, so it's just a matter of time. Okay. But in the meantime, mm. we got to do daddy's business because we're yes. part of the family. Yes. We're doing family business, yes, which is terrific. Do. I mean, mm. I could tell you a thousand stories, but uh, because mm. of the power of the testimony and it just, you can do it for that. And so we get to the point in the program mm. here that we're going to give people a chance and the opportunity mm. to ask Jesus into their lives. Yeah. Just like you and I did. Mm. You did it, you know, with the uh, car accident and all mm. that. Yes. So, you know. Just wrap your own words around it. Yeah. It's pretty simple. Mm. Tell them you know in your heart that uh, I'm not quite there. My, my, my bubbles are quarter off here. Yeah. Tell them I'm sorry for making a mess of things. Yes. And I, I'd like to get them straightened out. Mm. And I really would like to have you come into my heart and yes. help me live my life the way it is. Yes. You know, and make that a priority. Yes. And you really mean it. Mm. He's not checking your head. He's checking your heart. Yes. It will happen. It you will. ask and you will receive. Mm. If you don't ask, you know, you, you, will not you got you're not mm. got nothing. So you ask and expect it to happen, mm. and it'll hook you up with people that you can get fellowship with, and people that are walking that road, mm. and it's dynamite, mm. huh? So, Dorothy, once again, yes. thank you for coming over. Thank we you love so you. much. So much to you. Thank you so and much. And you say hello to Raphael when you get home. I will. Tell him he's one of the top ten best dressed guys <laughs> in the world. <laughs> thank you so okay. much. Okay. Say hi right. to Flo. I will. Okay. God bless you. God bless you. And out there in television land, have a great week, and we'll see you next week. Mm. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and